Welcome to my top 10 most anticipated and noteworthy comics for April 10th, 2024. I'm Mike Spider Slayer. Welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. It's never too early to start that pull list for next week and hopefully this list does help you make decisions on what comic books to buy. So before we start it guys, let's talk about whatnot if you guys haven't downloaded whatnot today what are you waiting for it's absolutely for free there is a link in my description box below when you click on that link you'll get to create your profile and then you will have access to bid on live auctions and when you win that live auction that first one you'll get a $15 credit that's right guys it doesn't cost you anything absolutely for free so if you're looking for that comic and you want to get a discount on it check out whatnot today again the link is in the description box below all right so let's talk about the book that's on the hot seat today guys and that one goes to rat city issue one i had no idea that this book was a spawn book until i had one of the comic book community members adam tell me uh, out there that this was a spawn book and this one is written by Erica Schultz and this is a book that takes place in the future and this is uh, about a, a character by the name of Peter Carnan who's an ex-soldier amputee. This dude's in the future, he's a spawn in the future. Sounds freaking cool. It's basically Spawn 2099, right? That's basically what it is. So I'm gonna check it out. Hopefully it's good and it's not cheesy. This is 40 pages, four bucks. Here's a book that's on the rise. Action Comics, issue 1064. It's been solid, guys, right? So now we're going to get the House of Brainiac storyline. This is part one. Uh, there's a couple of crossovers that are taking place within the Superman family uh, storylines. So I'm anxious to read this big Superman event. I think this is the first one in a little bit in a little while. So I'm looking forward to this one. This one is 40 pages. This is a $5 comic book. So let's kick off number 10. So number 10 goes to The Amazing Spider-Man. This is issue 47. We just got done with issue 46. It had to do with the Sinister Six. And I guess this is after the events of Web of Spider-Man. And this is going to be, I guess, about Chasm. So get ready for that. Chasm's coming back. Uh, and then it looks like we're going to see Hollow's Eve as well. And uh, it looks like we are leaning closer to Amazing Spider-Man issue 50. But if you're looking at the legacy numbering, we're getting closer to 1,000. So this is legacy numbering 941, 28 pages, $5. I'm not sure if John Romita Jr. is back on the artwork. All right, coming in at number nine, we have Ultimate X-Men. This is issue two. I know people like this book or people dislike this book. They're like, this is not an X-Men book. Maybe it's a mutant book, but I think we're going to get them into a team eventually. I think it's going to be a slow burn type of style of writing. Well, we'll get introduced to different cast of characters. Uh, you got introduced to the armor character. I think now we're going to get introduced to the May Storm character, and then eventually they're going to work together to do stuff. Hopefully it turns out that way. I'm going to check this one out. We'll see. It's something different. It's not my usual writing style. It's definitely not my art style. But again, we'll see the direction that it goes. 28 pages, $5. Coming in at number eight, we have Wolverine issue 47, Sabretooth War part seven. It's been really good. There's been a couple issues here and there not so good. Last issue was awesome as we just got to see Sabretooth use Quentin Quire's head to manipulate uh, Wolverine to go after one of Forge's weapons to depower mutants, which I thought was really awesome. Uh, Laura made her appearance once again. She's definitely alive. She was in a fight with other the other Sabretooth characters. It was really bloody, a little, little gory. Uh, I have fun with this book, man. So we'll see the direction it goes. This one is 28 pages five dollars legacy numbering for wolverine 389 moving on to number seven we have batman and robin this is issue eight uh we got to see man bat return uh it looks like flatline has returned as well teaming up with damien in this book which I really love because he's playing off of his last volume that he wrote with Robin. Uh, and I feel like this is becoming more of a Damien book than a Batman and Robin book, in my opinion. The artwork tends to be a little bit, 
I don't know, in your face, but it's not bad, right? And I loved seeing, again, Flatline come back and reintroduce, to the, reintroduce the character to readers that may have not read that previous series. So I'm looking forward to this one. This is 32 pages, $5. Also, Shush is teaming up with them as well when you thought she was the villain of the book, right? So I don't know, man, we'll see. Coming in at number six, we have Phantom Road. This is issue 10. This is a 32 page comic for $4. Um, this is a really good book, guys. It's a slow, it's a slow burn story uh, about these two that have come together, which is Dom and Birdie. And they got into an accident and they came across this, this artifact, this relic. And we found out that it's an egg. And in the last issue, the egg hatched and uh, it's this little like alien baby thing and they stashed it in this hotel and these guys are connected to this thing so they see each other's past and you get to see their pasts are just very bad right we got to see how uh birdie is the female how she was abused we wound up seeing dom how he accidentally killed his own son and uh it's just crazy how they're connected based off of their trauma now, where does this story go from here with this alien and all this other stuff? I don't know, man. It's weird. It's Jeff Lemire, but it's a freaking damn good book. This one is 32 pages, and this one is $4. Coming in at number five, we have Mighty Morphin Power Rangers The Return. This is issue three. Great freaking book. I'm not even a Power Rangers guy. I felt like you don't have to be a Power Rangers guy to understand what's going on here. Um... But we wind up seeing the Pink Ranger. Uh, she's the one that writes this book, actually. And uh, who's her name? Kelly Joe Johnson? Amy Joe Johnson? Something like that. Whatever. She was the Pink Ranger in the show. She writes this book. And basically, this is set 22 years in the future. The Power Rangers has been uh, disassembled. And now they're coming back together because the Red Ranger, I think his name is Jason, is the one that's gone missing. Okay. And uh, we wind up getting to see a villain make its return, uh, kind of, back in the last issue. I, I thought it was really good, man. This book is awesome. So this one is a $5 comic book. Coming in at number four, this is The Invincible Iron Man. This is issue 17. Really good book as Iron Man has created a new armor called the Mark 72, trying to take off, uh, take on the Orcus Sentinels. Um, really a lot of fun. He's successful to a point. The Mark 72 suffered some serious damage at the last issue, and he's fighting the guy that took over his business by the name of Fei Long. And one had like a war machine gigantic armor, and again, Iron Man had the Mark 72 armor and they were just battling out and just a, a crazy, a crazy um, issue. And I'm looking forward to the next one. We'll see where it goes. Great story overall with Tony, not just the technological part of side of things too. Him teaming up with Emma has been good. Solid, solid guys. Legacy numbering 667, 28 pages, four bucks. Coming in at number three, we have Green Lantern issue 10. Oh, man, let me tell you, this book is great. Now, Hal Jordan returns to Oa, and uh, really what's going on, based off of what happened in the last issue, it looks like the Green Lantern battery now has reformed on Earth, and the Green Lanterns of 2814 are going to be the guardians of, of, of the Green Lantern battery, uh, which I thought was really cool. The, how things transpired in that last issue <clears throat> it made huge progress, right? I really like what Jeremy Adams is doing with this book and the artwork is absolutely phenomenal here. And now he's going to the, the League of, um, what the hell are they called? The League of Planets, whatever the frick they are. They're the evil ones in this whole thing, right? I think they're the ones that have been holding Hal Jordan back and they're the ones that had their own core and things like that. Maybe we might get freaking carol ferris back as a star sapphire like we might get to see all the lanterns again which we haven't seen in a long time like freaking kyle rayner and freaking guy gardner and john stewart and jojo mullins and jessica cruz simon bass like that would be freaking sick right to see all these guys come back and see the core return once again wouldn't you want to see that i would 40 pages five bucks all right here we go coming in at number two we got 
Beneath the Trees Nobody Sees, issue five. Another fantastic freaking book. If you guys are not reading this book, whenever they release the trade to this, because I know you're not gonna find the single issues, unless you buy them like on eBay or something, you guys gotta buy it. Because this is a great like murder mystery, sci-fi book, right? And uh, just when you think our, our main character has things in check, based off of the second issue, like she's got things in control. She's the one used to being in control. She's lost her control. And now she's looking over her shoulder based off of the events that happened in the last issue. My God, this book is so freaking good. You gotta read it. This is the best thing that IDW has going for it right now. This is better than Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I just think it's just under the radar because people see like little bears and animals running around and shit like that. This is good, man. If you love like murder, mystery, or if you love, I mean, it's not really horror at all. It's more like thriller, suspense. Uh, you're gonna like this one. 32 pages, $4. All right, guys. Remember, after number one, we're not done as we have the noteworthy comic books to talk about because there's a lot more books coming out this week. It's a heavy week. All right, so here we go. My number one most anticipated is Transformers issue seven. Daniel Warren Johnson does just the writing now. He's not doing the artwork anymore, but I'm hoping that the artwork has that similar tone. If it does, I think we'll be okay. But the story here is gonna be Soundwave versus freaking Starscream for battle of the, for leadership of the Decepticons. You couldn't ask for any more of that. Based off of the main cover, it looks like Starscream wins, but maybe that's just a fake out. Let's hope that Soundwave can bust out all the cassette tapes, take on Starscream, the other Decepticons freaking getting by his side and take his little freaking ass out, man. I wanna see that. I wanna see that shit real bad. And I want Soundwave to win. He's my favorite Decepticon ever. So let's hope that happens, dude. This one is 32 pages, four bucks. Noteworthy comics. Here we go. We always started off with Marvel each and every week. Our first one goes to Fantastic Four, issue 19. Next one goes to, unfortunately, The Incredible Hulk, issue 11. This book has been going down each time it's coming out. It's so depressing. Next, we have Darth Vader, issue 45, followed by The Resurrection of Magneto. This is issue four. Then we have Carnage. This is issue six. Pretty good book. Another solid book, X-Men 97. This is issue two. This is a heavy week. There's some solid books on the noteworthy comics. Then we move on to another spider book. This is Edge of Spider-Verse. This is issue three as we get this Starship Spider. Then we have Symbiote Spider-Man 2099 issue two written by Peter David. Next, we move on to DC Comics as we have The Batman First Night issue two. First issue was pretty good. It's just not really my thing. I have other money to, I, I need, I have, I can't talk, I can't think. Think about it, Mike, just slow down a second. I have other comics that I can spend my money on besides Batman, the first night issue two. There we go. All right, and then we have the Red Hood, the Hill. This is issue three, not buying this one either. We have the Outsiders, this is issue six. Next, we have Suicide Squad Dream Team. This is issue two, followed by the Speed Force. This is issue six. Next, we have the Sinister Sons. This is issue three. A lot of people told me they love this book, Batman Dylan Dog. This is issue two. Now we move on to the indie comics. We have House of Slaughter. This is issue 22, followed by Scorched, issue 28. Then we have the Thundercats. This is issue three. Are you guys holding on to this book? Definitely a disappointment for some of you. Followed by I Hate Fairyland, and this is issue 13. Next, we have Napalm Lullaby, which was an all over the place type of book. Didn't even know what was going on in that first issue until you read like the end credits, like the letter page of where it's going, right? So yes, again, this is Napalm Lullaby issue two. 
And there are all of the uh, most anticipated and noteworthy comics for April 10th, 2024. Is there anything here that excites you? Let me know in the comments below. Also, why don't you consider joining my YouTube membership program, guys? It's right there on the homepage. Just hit join. As low as 99 cents, you get early access to my videos. You get monthly badges letting you know how long you've been a member of my channel for. You get stickers on, your com on the comments during those live streams, and you should during comments as well. And as always, guys, if you love my content, here's more content right here. This is after the poll. This is my thoughts on all the current comic books for the current comic book week. And I'll stop talking. So remember, guys, as always, support the local comic shops. Keep buying. Keep collecting. But always remember to read those comics so we can have great conversation. Guys, thank you so much. I'll see you real soon. Bye.